but we're going to talk a little bit of currencies. We're going to talk a little bit of commodities. <laughs> and we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, folks, we're going to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can check out Teddy's outstanding newsletter right under the newsletter tab, folks, the Tiger Forex Report. He's got new issues out every week. It's only $97. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And don't forget, under the services tab, right on TFNN, he's got a couple of great <coughs> webinars out there as well, Capitalizing on Time with Calendar Stock Option Spreads and Japanese Candlestick Pattern Stock and Option Strategies with our man, Teddy Kegstat. Teddy, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, so uh, we talked to you last Wednesday, and we've had a few things going on in this market since then. Uh, where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? Um, you know where I like to kick things off is from a conversation I had on Sunday uh, while I was watching the Bears lose. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Um, which the Bears have nothing to do with anything. Uh, so That's I ran into one, an yeah. old friend, <laughs> and uh, I, I ran into an old friend, and he said, uh, you know, obviously there was the Fed rate uh, cut last week. And uh, he said, what do you think is going to happen now with the markets, you know, as far as he's like not in the next couple of weeks, but over the next six to, you know, eight months or so. And I'm like, well, I'm like, if you want probably a sure thing, sure pick, I'm like, buy gold and uh, buy bonds. You know, I'm like, I told him, I'm like, you know, for the last couple of years, I mean, I said already th been telling people three, four years ago, get out of your bonds, get out of your bonds. They're going to start raising rates eventually. And, uh, you know, now we know that the cycle is done. And also we had the Fed, uh, one of the Fed people come out saying that, you know, pretty much it's likely that they're going to have multiple rate cuts over the next six to eight months and also in half point increments, you know. So uh, with that kind of aggressive talk out of the Fed, um, Unless the economic numbers come start swinging back the way they were, you know, I think that uh, you have to ride those two trades. Gold's gonna fur is gonna shore up, bonds are gonna shore up, you know. So I think that those are kind of a given trend play, you know. Um, so that's a that's a good deal, you know. As far as we haven't had a trend trending market for the interest rates in a while, and now we have <clears throat> really some clarity that the Fed's on a mission to start cutting rates for at least six to eight months. So I think those are two, two fundamental two markets that you have to pay attention to that fundamental as long as it stays in that in that speak, if you will, that that trend is probably going to be intact for at least six months, I would say. Yeah, I, we got a lot of gold bugs that love that to hear that, Teddy. Um, and it makes sense. I was jumping through the dollar, of course, jumping through the gold contract when you're talking about it, man. Yields, of course, um, pulling back, to put it lightly. And you talked about the next six or nine months. So what I've been talking about in the last week, Teddy, it is remarkable how many cuts. And, you know, the Fed is responsible for this, as in they're putting out, hey, you know, it's time to cut. We're overly restrictive, et cetera. Um, the risks, you know, some of the verbiage out there, depending on who you ask on the Fed, but Chairman Powell, the risks are now more weighted to the economy versus price stability, that kind of debate that they're having. But they're talking about, I mean, you pull up like the Fed Watch tool, just some gauges of what the market is pricing in over the next six or nine months. And, you know, you go out to June of next year and you're talking about almost like a Almost two full percentage points is what the market is pricing in yep. over the next nine months, which yep. they only have like six meetings or something like that, seven meetings, which means they're basically going to have to go 50, 50, and then 25 for every meeting. So, um, what do you think? And I, you kind of laid it out already, but do you see that maybe changing? Do you see, and I know this is going to take some time because I love what you said right now. You know, we're on the path right now and probably won't be a change for some time. But it is interesting that when we get, you know, nine months is not that far out in the future for the market to be expecting two full percentage points of cuts. Are you looking for any differences there? Are you expecting maybe that's where the Fed goes? Are you going to wait for the data? How do you think about that where just so many cuts priced in right now at a time when S&P just closed at a record high, you know, across the board? Things are pretty good for two full percentage points of cuts over the next nine months or so. Well, I think it's 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 being done not before where they were raising rates and blah 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 for the whatever reason they were doing, and now we know that the cutting is supposedly because they want to uh, you know inflation is slowing and whatever. Um, my take is that's all nonsense. The the real reason the Fed is going to be so aggressive, and we talked about this already like six seven months ago about how. Two years ago, before they started rate, uh, cutting rates, when rates were really, really low, um, the banks, especially, 
um, with it because they're such geniuses when it comes to trading, uh, refinance all kind of liabilities with short-term interest rates instead of long-term where they could have locked in for 30 years. Um, sure. So did a lot of municipalities and so did the government. Yeah. You know? So, and, and what happened is now the, the, just the interest cost alone we know for the government has gone up. Okay. Oof, but yeah. here's the biggest problem. The banks have to refinance all these short-term liabilities and rates in the short term and the long term are how much higher even with this half a point cut okay yeah so in order to bail out the banks as a preemptive move they're going to be very aggressive with cutting rates that's the only thing that makes sense for this you know because I, we talked about at the beginning of the year that was part of our forecast for the for the year was how much the government alone had to refinance and the biggest part of that you know when it's coming due now so they just right now because of the, any bond issuance they're going to do think about how much money they just they're going to save and make off of sure. just this move okay yeah. so and especially with the way our government has been blowing money especially on there's one sector i mean we got m all these new people coming into our country all these you know they're being who's paying for it the bond market and the taxpayer that's who's paying for it they have to fund it how are they going to fund it? They're going to they're going to devalue the dollar, which is synthetically being done by an aggressive rate cutting streak, and then there'll be print quantitative easing to float it up, and then have more cash to spend on that. And hopefully, they'll go to their banking geniuses and say, "Okay, would you now refinance on a 30-year structure because they can't stay at zero forever?" You know, I mean that it, yeah. it's just that's really the situation I think we're in. You know, I mean we t we had this the forecast, you know like I said at the beginning of the year for what was going to happen and I think it's time to pay the piper and that's this is the only way that they can do it and that's why I'm really solid on these trend things if you were to go by the t economic fundamentals they should not they should have done a quarter point because we still don't know for sure how slow inflation is accelerating because sure. it's still accelerating yeah. you know so and I think yeah. these are the things that really impact our trend what I found so interesting is why they decided to go 50 without going 25 in the meeting before, right? As in, you know, that six weeks period was somehow mm -hmm. a determining factor where they didn't cut rates prior, but now they have to go 50. And yeah, you know, Chairman Polly talked about a couple jobs reports in there. There's data, of course there is, but I agree with you to a certain degree. It is remarkable that they come, they come quickly with 50 and then, you know, and now, and now, boy, the market's like, yeah, they're going to bring it, man. Um, you know, I was, I always check out your tiger forex report on mondays i love how you have so many whether it's the upper correction bound you have these critical areas right breakout levels upside targets downside targets etc when you're looking at now i'm going to ask you about gold but it ties into okay. the dollar of course so maybe we can just start you know what we're going to come into a break can you hang with us teddy and we'll talk yeah. just maybe about i wanted to ask you you know if you're looking at the dollar this is we'll tease it folks what levels maybe because we're at kind of that hundred level right now gold's at all-time highs maybe we can talk about some levels when we get back we'll talk some crude all right all right folks we're gonna talk gold dollar and crude with our man teddy we'll be right back Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien. We're chatting with our man, Teddy Kegstat. We got the S&Ps positive by one right now. And so, Teddy, you know, I have your issue up here that you put out for subscribers on Monday. And just a quick glimpse, folks. I love how you put, you know, critical areas, man, just, you know, definitive areas in your opinion here. You know, for the DXY, you have critical breakout areas. You have targets, of course. But if you're making that case, and I think a lot of people agree with you, myself included, in terms of the trends, my next question goes, okay, where are we possibly going, you know, on these levels? And for instance, the dollar sitting at 131. Mm -hmm. How do you look at that on, on a six, nine month basis even or something like that? Are there levels? I know you have levels around 100 maybe on the downside in there on your newsletter. But mm -hmm. where as, you know, traders out there where are you looking in that dollar critical area 100 for sure well you know it's it's interesting is right now <clears throat> we're floating just above the low that we set back in uh what is it uh july of uh last year that's I got a big it up low. right on the chart as you yep right there if, totally if, if we once we take that out you know i, I basically gotta say look out below you know and one of the nice. things i i if 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 I'm correct in those trends, now is this gonna is this gonna happen over the next couple of days? Most likely, we're not gonna have that. No, big of right. A no, I'm with you. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and I would be more. I would I would say you have to be in a sell rally forecast now when it comes to the right. dollar. So the yeah. dollar strength is going to wane um, is, as long as we're gonna have this Fed pressure, you know. And uh, if that is the case, then you're gonna see 
I would think you're going to see gold definitely continue to rally. Um, I think you could see a correction in gold probably if there was a profit-taking slide. Let's say somehow the dollar gets a big binge rally. 23.25 would be probably the low area you would see in gold. Okay. I think if it gets below 2450, that's when you have a shot at hitting that lower target. 2450 nice. is probably going to be your real corrective baseline for gold. Now, as for where it's at right now, you're trading between 2628 and what is it, 2683 right now. That's a key uh, rally target area where you should have a pocket of resistance and see a little bit of a pullback. Because right now we're we're push testing these extremes, but are we at the bottom of a range or a top of the range? That's the big question. And if we get above it, well, then gold can go to 2800 Bonds are going to skyrocket. Uh, tenure will as well. And you may see uh, crude have a tough time rallying because of the cost of carry. Teddy, I love it. So much great information, man. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, man. Thank you.